show. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes! Guess what we just dipped into, Jack, off the air? What? Talking to Greg Barrett, our special guest host today, author of many huge books like It's Called a Breakup Because It's Broken, He's Just Not That Into You, and the new one coming out will be called... It's Just a Bleeping Date. God, that's a good or one. Or Freaking Date. Yeah, and th- I like it. Your titles are really good. You hear the title and you're like, oh, I totally know what that's about. I got to read it. Right? Thank it's you. It's Just a Bleeping Date. Come on, people. Lighten up. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's some people like you uh, uh, approach them, ask them out for a date, and, and they become horribly offended. They're a large, fat man that's all sweaty would ask them out. <laughs> I, you know, it's so weird. It's just like, and then people go into dates with really high expectations, and they wonder why it doesn't work out. Yeah, you know? can get married. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. that's it's, People it's... need to lighten up. Now, with all this going on, do you have a, a website or a MySpace? Or... Well, there's good old gregbarrant.com. Uh, so if you want to come to any of the tapings of the Greg Barron Show, if you want to be a guest on the Greg Barron Show, you can go to gregbarron.com. How do you spell Barron? B-E-H-R-E-N-D-T. Okay. Couldn't be any harder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Was Greg B si- taken put, already? Yeah. <laughs> GregB.com? I guess so. Let's put some silent, let's put a silent H in there and two consonants at the end and make it not look like it sounds. That's awesome. Way to go, website. <laughs> Too bad your name isn't Dane Cook. <laughs> right. Oh, Two yeah. words that are easy to say. Now, how about uh, MySpace? Because Jack is the king of MySpace. He he lives on there. I have two MySpace pages uh, wow. that my sister operates uh, for me because uh, uh, I I like MySpace. I think it's good. But then you also, you know, it's uh, you know, I feel dirty on there sometimes. Dude, I'm 43 years old, man. I get some people that want to well, add. Dude, what, what, what are you doing? Yeah, don't troll the team <laughs> yeah. rooms, Greg. Well, you, know, <laughs> you know, it's like you get this thing. A pair of breasts wants to be your friend. I don't think I can be friends with a pair of breasts. You know what I mean? I don't think I can do that. My favorite thing is that girls put their profiles up, right? And so they'll, they'll and women, if you're listening to me, just just listen to what I'm saying. So a girl put her picture up, right? And she'll put a picture of like of her thong or something like that, right? Yeah. But then the first thing on her page will be like, I don't want any jerks emailing me. You creep, stop emailing me. You put a picture of your thong on there. <laughs> that's a jerk. That's a jerk magnet. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if you right. put it on there, we're all gonna look, and then some guys are gonna think, God, if she's gonna show me that, what's next? Like so, an if email. you don't want jerks to email you, then don't put pictures. <laughs> You know, of your panties on there. Am I wrong? And why does everyone do that? When you go to MySpace, it's even like young people that shouldn't be on there doing like scantily clad lingerie photos and stuff. It's not all those. A lot of them. A lot of that. A lot of them are the old hold the camera out at arm's length, look down, and take your own picture. I don't get that one. Like, you can't have a direct shot on MySpace. Everybody has to be like kind of in profile, holding the camera themselves. Yeah, they make it seem like this was this this picture was taken as I was walking somewhere. I don't know what happened. <laughs> right? Yeah, like it was a surprise. It's and then a, pop- oh, slap it's a paparazzi it on. photo, man, that I took in my bathroom of myself. <laughs> this is me leaving my bathroom. I know. I mean, look, you know, it's I, I think it's a good place to like, you know, you can network there. It's good if you have a band or if you have, you know you want to like collect fans and that kind of thing. Or if but, a big uh, uh, jackass boss takes your radio show off, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it it's does amazing. Work well. And how that MySpace page works for you? Yeah, no, it's so true. It's the people's. It's the people's page, but uh, it's also a little hoochie every once in a while. So people oh, put your man. clothes back on, and, you know? and, and that's what and that's what they email you. And 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 I mean, I get a lot of questions. We too. all know you're married too. You're married. You're you're a father. You got kids. And yeah. do they try to come at you like that? Every once in a while, they will. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's a lot of if you weren't married kind of stuff. But I I, I have a picture of my wife and I up on the page so that people are. You're not wearing a thong. <laughs> no, I am wearing a thong. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, no, wearing a thong and a foundation garment. <laughs> And, uh, and then there's my tranny page. But other than that, it's all good. Oh, I love trannies. Yeah, no, I don't know. No, you like she I like she males. We have we've had this discussion. Mm-hmm. Ah. Trannies are gross to me. It's uh she males I like. Likes. Yeah, it's well, you get those two confused every once in a while, but yeah. I get them confused still and I'm the one that's into them. <laughs> okay. The numbers are one eight hundred star nine eight seven. If you want to call and talk to Greg, we are gonna take a break here in just a minute and talk to uh, Sam Rubin. But uh, in the meantime, you can get on the phones, 1-800-STAR-987. And another thing, too, are you doing uh, – because you, you are a big celebrity. You are, your celebrity is growing <laughs> oh, every day. And as that massive. TV show goes, yeah. are you starting to do like get out more and, and see other celebrities and – I'm um, always hanging out with celebrities. No, but going you know, to the parties, I mean? like going to the parties. Like I went to a party the other night, and uh, okay, Ava Longoria was there, Jessica yeah. Simpson was there, Paris Hilton was there. Yeah, and these are people I only read about. Yeah, no, I've uh, no, I've uh, <laughs> they've had you know you do a lot of press stuff, so I've been doing to a lot of premieres. Did you do the, the upfronts or whatever yeah. they call that? Isn't everybody I, in the industry there? Uh, everyone is in the industry there. I wasn't at the upfronts because oh, okay. I was working. But uh, good for you. But uh, the um, you know, but like I'm going like I went to the Click premiere the other night, and then um, I was mm. there with my sister. That's a good one. Is that awesome? 
Yeah, it's fun. We it talked is. to Henry Winkler yesterday. It looks funny. Henry Winkler was there. He walks onto the red carpet. I'm standing there. He He's standing next to me. He's just staring at me. And I said, hey, how's it going? He goes, Fonzie? good. I go, I'm Greg Barron. He goes, yes, you are. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And then his wife came up to me and said, thank you so much for the book. My daughter's blah, blah, blah. And he wow. didn't know who I was. Oh, and he was very cool. sweet to me. Yeah, he was really, really cool. Henry Winkler is really awesome. But when you, people think like, oh, you're walking the red carpet. And it's like, you know, they make you do it for press. Yeah. But a lot of times the press isn't inter- interested. So your publicist goes, hey, everybody, it's Greg Barrett. And people go, oh, uh, you know, and they don't know who you are yet. So it seems like it's cool, but it's actually a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and then they're like, oh, OK. And then like five people take a photo. And then you're like, this is weird. Oh. You know, and I mean, those people get yeah. mean. I've done red carpet interviews for the radio get before where the I way. stand there. Mm-hmm. And when the publicist comes by yeah. and they'll you know offer you people and the people, I don't know who that is. Keep going. And they'll be mean. And like the person standing right there, I'm like, at least be nice. You know, per, don't yeah. turn the yeah. recorder on. Yeah, or they'll Talk do to like, them for a minute. Or like sometimes they'll, you'll be doing an interview because your publicist asked for it. And then it's like, you know, you're doing an obligatory thing where they're not even running tape. Right. Yeah. Oh, we, we do that. Yeah. Do Radio that. does I, that. That's what I always say to them. I always go, obligatory interview while you're not running tape. Hi, I'm Greg Barrett. Like, I let them know that I know. Right. I know you don't know me or why. I mean, yes, I wrote the book, and soon I'll be on television, and perhaps then you'll want to speak to me. But the show doesn't debut until September. I got you, bro. <laughs> and there's Adam Sandler. So why don't we talk to the star of the movie instead of this guy from the show that doesn't exist? <laughs> He's not even on TV yet. Yeah, nice hair. Oh, hey, we've got a call for you already, and, and we're going to do Therapy Thursday with Greg Barrett, and the uh, calls will start coming in. 1-800-STAR-987. Let's go ahead and kick it off. Then we're going to do Sam Rubin, and then, and then we're going we'll to come back, come back full for force. a full-blown Therapy Thursday session. And right now, Melissa, welcome to the show. You're on with Greg Barrett. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Hi Melissa. Hi, guys. Hi. We still rule. We rule. We rule. I had a question. Um, I've known this guy for about four years. We've been friends. We belong to the same club. And we went out of town together for a friend's wedding. And we kind of hooked up, but not totally hooked up. And we've gone out quite a few times since then. It's been about a month now. And he hasn't kissed me again. And he's like, well, let's go out and do this. Is that a, I'm a slacker. I don't know. This is him being a slacker. He doesn't know how to pursue girls or. No. Or we're just friends. I think you're just friends. He got okay. drunk. Yeah, I mean, he got drunk. He had a good time. I mean, he already knows that the the pathway to you exists, and he's not going down it. And that's his mistake because you're awesome. But uh, yeah, no, he's not. Uh, he's not into it. Okay, that's true. Oh, yeah. oh it's a totally. I mean, yeah, because I mean, if I made out with you at a wedding and then we were still hanging out after that, and I knew that opportunity exists, I'd make out with you again if I was down with it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And I'm and I'm sure you are worth making out with. But uh, oh, I am. I, I don't. I don't doubt it. You sound very uh, super foxy. But uh, uh, but he's just not uh, he's not into you. So move on and, and find someone that really wants to make out with you. Excellent, thank you. Close you that door. It. Thanks, Melissa. Have a great day, guys. All right, we'll see you later, everybody else. One eight hundred star nine eight seven. We will get into therapy Thursday here. Uh, Greg Barron is in. He's got some real practical, just dude advice for for you in in the uh, real life world of dating and, and all that great stuff. But Sam Rubin is next with entertainment, and hopefully he'll have, like, a sleazy Greg Barron story just to, you know, go with the show. <laughs> nice. So we'll have all that when we come back. Jamie Jack and Sten. Sam Rubin's entertainment report on the Jamie Jack and Sten Show. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Thursday. It is Therapy Thursday. In a moment, we will get to all the calls we have for Greg Barrett. Right now, it is entertainment time. Here is Sam Rubin. I'm just going to go to the phone, Jack, because I don't think that thing's working. It's not. It's up, right? It's not going. Sam! Whose fault is that? <laughs> Oh, you know what's funny? He just double echoed. Am I, I, yeah, because I'm, I'm in the room with the thingy, thingy and the phone. Oh, He's and a, now you got to work, yeah. or did you not? Yeah, yeah, no, you're working. We're not. Okay. There, there's weird stuff going on, but you are on, Sam. Welcome to the show. Say good morning to Greg. Greg is like a guy we admire and envy because he writes one book and gets a bunch of... I, who's the like behind-the-scenes super team Greg that vaulted you to all the stardom? Uh, you know what, man? Just the, just the same people I've always had. My Just me and my manager, buddy. See, that's what's it, it like to have a manager? I have a manager. <laughs> <laughs> and that lady, Oprah, helped. Oh, right, that's right. I forgot about that. She helped out a little bit, too. So <laughs> how, much, how much of a demarcation was pre- and post-Oprah? When did, the, when did Sony come up with the offer? Uh, pretty quick after the, uh, after the second Oprah. I just waited a while. Mm. I, I wasn't sure that I wanted to do a daytime talk show. It see, you know, I wasn't sure what the. I didn't you know, everybody know. always said they're like, I just don't know. And then all of a sudden, this wheelbarrow of money comes to your house. And it's like, well, you know what? Maybe. Well, you know, after I rolled around in it for a while, <laughs> Sam, uh, you know, the smell of money is awesome. No, you know what it was? It was just trying to. It was just trying to make sure that they let me be me completely. You know what I mean? Because when you're in daytime, you know, there's that tendency to sure. like soften it or not make it fun. And and Sony was like, look, just come be you. 
you know, tell people what you feel. And so far, that's been the case. It's been great. Great. Actually, that show will air right here on Channel 5 starting in September. Yes. yes. So it's uh, Psyched so, about that. So Greg will be on the morning news essentially every day. That's right. Uh, that's absolutely <laughs> And you know what, man? I'm a fan of yours. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Look at How the love. That? It's it's that it, we call it log rolling in our time. It's that media love. That's no, right. no, that yep. that book is fantastic. It's Thank so you. hilarious. Thank so, you. Uh, good for you. Uh, we'll look forward to that. All right, we're uh, now. You're from New York, Gregor, from here. No, I'm from uh, actually from San Francisco. All so right, I live well here then, now. Uh, pretend you're from New York, so you can say that you really like the Sopranos. I oh, love the Sopranos. The Sopranos are awesome. I love it. <laughs> All right, here's who's uh, not signed up for this new final season: Pauly Walnuts, oh. Dr. Melfi, Silvio, AJ, Meadow, and Bobby. They're all not ready to go, and they're starting to film in like a week. Wow. So that's kind of a problem. And apparently Who's James Gandolfini, Tony Soprano, is going to sit down with his co-stars. Uh, a headline in for a Hollywood Reporter says, Golfini uh, puts muscle on pals uh, to try to uh, resolve all this. $85,000 per episode for the kids. They're saying that's not enough. Okay, mm. we, we could get rid of the kids. I'm going Yeah, that. that's all right. You could whack them. I yeah. say just one big bloody dinner party at the beginning, <laughs> and then just let's see Tony. It's Tony Christopher there. It's fine. Yeah, you're totally <laughs> see, yeah, you see, I, I think that show is so textured, yeah. and there's so many. I, I mean, I hate to lose anybody. No, it's true. Although, I don't know. Every once in a while, I want to just take Robert Eiler out. I yes. know that's his character. I'm like, you're my son. I'd whack you. I don't care if you're my own son. You're a punk, and you need one right in the face. All right, Greg, I'm not trying to pry. Uh, uh, single person, unattached, or wildly committed for you at the moment? Me, wildly committed. Married, two kids. All right, congratulations to you. Thank you. But when you were doing the publicity stuff for the book, yeah. and you did, I assume, lots of local radio, local TV, yeah. any of the uh, female broadcasters try to pick up on you? Uh, you know who uh, hit on me a little bit was Susie Orman. Really? Really? Yeah. I mean, she you was know. just very flirty. She's just very flirty, even though she knew it like that. Like she, like she was like, she goes, "You look." She goes, "Did you lose weight since Oprah? You look good in that shirt." Oh, like, oh yeah, she was very. Nice. Yeah. You know, Susie Orman has been on our show a couple of times, yeah. and I think is uh, uh, somehow we asked her how rich she was, mm -hmm. and she, this is all off camera. She's like, "Well, if you want to take a ride in the plane." Oh, oh wow! Oh, yeah, that's no, no, rich. No. Yeah, no, she's ready to go. She's yeah. wearing and ready to go. Yeah, you're exactly I like right. Her. Yeah, she's sort she, of the, the Jackie Collins of her generation. Yeah. Um, in any event, uh, there's a New York uh, TV anchor woman who uh, folks listening won't necessarily know, attractive woman named Dana Tyler, and uh, big, you know, local anchor person in New York. Apparently, she was interviewing Phil Collins for that Tarzan musical. The musical sounded awful. The interview went well. They are now dating. They've been keeping it quiet for several weeks, but it's out now, and this is something that always happens if you ever date a TV newscaster. Hmm. When they show you around the studio, you know it's serious. So oh really? He, so he brought, she brought Phil around. He's not but, even divorced yet. Right, but wow! Oh, but that's man. how uh, Clint Eastwood married a news anchor. Remember? Exactly right, and that's you know, uh, Deanna Roos. She wa he watched her on the local uh, you know ABC station in San Luis Obispo or something. Do you think you could hook me up with like Laura Diaz or something? Is I actually right. you know what? Uh, Stetcher, actually feel, I actually feel I could. Okay. Or Carlos, could you could you make that happen? Yeah, because yeah. Carlos isn't biting on my right. uh, on my offers. On uh, your offers, I could I could make a call. And speaking of uh, marriage, Greg, uh, pro or con prenups? I'm pro prenups. You are? Yeah. Really? Why? Because I think it's a, I think it, I think it's whatever you guys decide. It's fine. Okay. Sign up for print up. Yeah. All right. Uh, Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban taking your advice, though I don't know they necessarily called you. Apparently, a print up <laughs> in the works there. Uh, the big wedding supposedly happening this weekend, still in Australia, but uh, a bunch of British people, you know, and I, how they know this stuff, I have no idea. Have actually, you know, printed the print up. Uh, he'll get a million wow. and a half a year, provided he stays away from drugs and alcohol. Wait a minute. He gets he's gonna get her money. I thought Keith Urban's a big star. You know, I was thinking about Stench. I had the exact same thought, but Doesn't I guess she have she's. Tom Cruise money that she got from oh. that divorce? I think she has Tom Cruise money and her own independent movie money. Yeah, and she does pretty well. But yeah. if he stays away from drugs and alcohol? Right. He was on God, crack. That's not worth it. I've, yeah. been so, I've been sober nine and a half years. I haven't gotten a dime. I'm going to call my wife. What up? Where's my she, money? She owes you millions. Where's my sober money? Millions. Yeah. I need a little sober dough. Man, any uh, big stories coming up for us in the 9.30? 9.30, well, uh, they might need their counseling. Uh, is Cameron Diaz suddenly single? Has Justin decided he's just not that into her? We'll talk about that. I've oh. heard she is also infatuated with the Ashley Simpson nose job and is thinking about getting a little bump removed. Really? It's a tabloid fodder. Probably right. not true, but I, I have like heard that. that. <laughs> All right, I'll keep that in mind. All right, we'll talk, talk to you guys. Have a good show, Greg. Thanks, See man. Bye. See ya, everybody else. Uh, stay tuned. We are kicking off Therapy Thursday. When we come back, we will have Abel and Rebecca on the line. They've already got relationship issues, and we will address them with our friend Greg Barrett next. Jamie Jack and Stan.
Welcome back, everybody. It is Therapy Thursday. It is time for our official Therapy Thursday kickoff. Greg Barrett is our guest host today. Thank you for being here, Greg. We do appreciate it. No, thanks for having me, man. And you've got a lot going on. Greg's busy, busy guy. The most famous book, He's Just Not That Into You, is out. Then it's called A Breakup because it's broken. And now the new one coming. It's a ble- just a bleeping date. Just a bleeping date. <laughs> Just That's a bleeping funny. date, yeah. Man, and these things have, have put you into the stratosphere of a relationship expert. That's right. I'm a relationship expert. But I'm, not, re- I'm but, just a dude. But you're just a That's regular guy. I'm just a regular guy with a regular guy's opinion. You can take it or leave it. But I think uh, that's the space that I occupy in the world. That's why there will be the Greg Barrett show during the day. Absolutely. And then the uh, the Greg Barrett uh, breaks you up. Coming. Greg, Barrett, Greg Barrett's <laughs> wake-up call. <laughs> Uh, Which is ABC. a breakup special. <laughs> it's just about me. It's, it's sort of like a super nanny. I go and I hang out with couples and tell them, look, this thing's either going to work or not, but stop this thing that you're doing. Either be in it or don't be in it, but don't do this like, I don't like the way you do. Remember, stop. Yeah. Don't be in a bad relationship. Either get out of it or go on with it, but don't stay in a bad relationship. It's a waste of time. We've got a lot of relationships on the line. We've got questions. We're going to start off with Abel. Abel, you're on with Greg Barrett. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you very much. You guys rule. We rule. We rule. Uh, yeah, I just had a couple questions about the way I should uh, deal with uh, my ex. I mean, it's a very recent thing. We've been broken up for about two months. Actually, she broke up with me on Easter. And um, between now and then, she's already uh, found somebody new. You know, they're dating and everything. And it's a real tough situation because as of right now, I'm more in love with her than I've ever been. And uh, I don't know. It's just that, you know, I, I find when I, you know, try to confess my undying love to her, I, I seem to be pushing her away more. Ooh, they hate that. <laughs> do, do you think? Yeah. Do you think she's with somebody else? So you pushed her uh, all the way away. Here's yeah. the thing, dude. She's just not. She, you're done. It's done. She's. She, you have your answer. The, you, you gotta. You gotta stop talking to her. In fact, you, yeah. need, you need to go the opposite direction for 60 days, bro. You cannot talk to her, see her, be around her, look Text. at her things. It's called a he talks, dude. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It's called a she talks for you. She you gotta, talks. You gotta well, detox she... from her. You gotta like leave her alone. She's not interested in you anymore. Yeah, and it's tough because we have a son together, and he'll be two in August. So I, I have to see her every single day, but I try to refrain from, um, you know, bringing up us or bringing up yeah, anything from the past. Yeah. And you know what? You know what you got to do for him. Yeah, uh, you gotta like you gotta be the man, and you just gotta pre- treat her like a professional acquaintance. You know what I mean? Because the kid is the priority, and you can't have a chaotic relationship around him. And so what you need to do is just like you know set it up so that you know you're passing off the kid and you're cordial to each other when you're around him. And then for the most part, you're just not together. You're just not with her, and let her move on, dude, so that you can move on and find somebody else. Thanks for the call, Abel. Uh, right now, we'll keep it moving. Go to Rebecca. Rebecca, you're on with Greg Barrett. It is Therapy Thursday. What is your question? Hey, guys. Well, Greg, I definitely need a, a regular guy's opinion on this one. You um, got it. I've been married for almost five years. Okay. And we have sex probably every three months. Oh, that's awesome. Slow it down a little bit. Wow. Yeah, bring it down to once a year. It sucks. Hey, that's quarterly. That's not that bad. You that's know? bad. That's four <laughs> times a year, Jack. That's terrible. Uh, have you talked about it? Oh, we've talked about it a lot. And what, what, what always happens? What, what, what is the conversation? Well, he's a workaholic. I mean, he works a lot. Yeah. I, I work, too. I mean, we're both tired. We have a son. Um, and I've said to him, you know, let's let's go get therapy. Let's figure out what's going on. Let's figure out if there's a bigger issue. And right. No, we can work it out ourselves. It's it's fine. I just need to get more sleep. I just need to concentrate. No. Yeah, no, it's not yeah. They're just excuses. Here's the thing. you got to set an ultimatum, and then there has to be consequences. That's just the way how people work. You're just going to say, look, we need to work on this because I want to be in a relationship that has sex in it. That's what I deserve. And if it doesn't work out, there's, it's going to be it's going to be a problem, and it's going to be a bigger problem than you want. So if you want me walking out of this relationship, then that's what we're going to have to do. But if you're willing to, but you've got to set you've got to set some consequences. Otherwise, he's just not going to do it because you're letting him get away with it. It's a good consequence. I'm going to bone the neighbor. That's a very good consequence. <laughs> you know, you're allowed to have a sex life. That's the beautiful thing yeah. about it. I know. But I would never. I would never cheat on him. But I he mean, knows we're not, that we're not asking you to cheat on him. We, what we want you to do is to say to him. This is going to, I would say to my wife, this is going to wreck the marriage. So we need to work on this, or I'm going to walk out and find somebody who wants to not only be with me, but also wants to make love to me. But again, I mean... Oh. What? Well, now you're finding more excuses. Yeah. Well, I, 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 just, I just gave you a really I, practical answer. You've, you've tried to talk to him about it. You've can asked I, him to go to therapy. <laughs> I know, but how is it make the relationship better for me to threaten to walk out? What you do is you sit down with him and you say, I love you. 
I want this relationship to work and I want to have sex. If we can't have sex and we can't work on this, it's going to be a problem. He right now, you're, he right now, he knows he can get away with it. He knows he can be tired because he knows you're not going to do anything. And you're about never going to cheat. Uh, and you said, and so he's got you. You've got to lay it down there. And I'm going to tell you something. As a man, I respond when things are going badly. I respond <laughs> to. I respond to like, oh God, I better fix this. You know what I mean? If he doesn't want to work it out, you know what I mean? I, I guarantee you, if you tell him that, you, that this could be the end of the relationship, he'll get his ass into therapy if he's in love with you. That's true. And God. he should be in love with you because you're awesome. Thank you for the call, Rebecca. Uh, and that's one thing guys do. I know, by the way, myself, I was with my, my current wife now for, God, we dated for six, seven years. Right? <laughs> and it was, you know what? We're either going to the next level or we're not. And once they get to that point, then, you know, I'm married now. Everything's cool. And and nothing's changed in our relationship. It, it's the the same as it was before. It's just now we're married, whereas before we weren't. And I had issues with, you know, just I was I gotta be right, gotta be sure, gotta be sure. Had a bad one before, gotta make sure. Then they put that ultimatum on you. Yeah, you'd be amazed at how quick guys act when they get ultimatums. Well, the point is, like, she already asked him to go to therapy. She already asked him to do those things. Otherwise, yeah. I would say, ask him to go to therapy, talk to him about it. But if he's already saying, no, 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 we're going to work it out ourselves, you're not working it out, you're not getting an answer. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. But when we return, Greg, we're going to fire up the Voice Disguiser 7000. That is the greatest piece of uh, broadcast equipment since the invention of the radio, to come to radio. I can't wait. I can't wait. It, we turn it on. People completely disguises their voice. No one knows who they are. They can speak to you completely anonymous. And we've got a lady that's married and boning somebody on the side, and we'll talk to her next. You got it. Hey, shrinks are expensive. With Jamie Jack and Stench. Welcome back, everybody. It is Therapy Thursday. Greg Barrett is our special in-studio guest. Thank you so much for coming in here this morning and no, talking to us. thank you guys. I love your show. And actually, we really look forward to the uh, Greg Barrett show coming soon to the, uh, it's going to be the CW. CW. Here in L.A. That's right. Se uh, September 12th. And then the books, the newest book is, it's called A Bleeping Day. <laughs> it's called A Bleeping Day. It will come out sometime at the uh, end of the year, possibly the first of the year. And then there will be the re-release of He's Just Not That Indie with an extra chapter. And the paperback version of yeah, but it's called The Breakup Because It's Broken. Books, books, books. Wow. Books. Lots of books. It's all going to happen, and someday I'll take a nap. And I'll tell you, those books, there's people on the line just calling to say thank you for writing those books. Because they, they really break it down to, to you know real simple advice on relationships. And we've got people on the line right now, Jack, that want to use the Voice Disguiser 7000. Do right. you have that fired up? Yep. Let's talk to Melissa right now. Melissa, welcome to the show. You're on with Greg Barrett. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, I have a um, kind of a crazy situation. I'm um, married. I've been married 25 years, um, the 28th, actually. Um, and I've recently been seeing somebody on the side. He's twice my age. Um, I enjoy him so much. And I've always had a problem uh, being committed with my husband. Well, it's um, a good thing you got married. Did you say twice your age? <laughs> I know. Yeah, okay. I did. Why, I why, why are you doing this? There's something I'm getting out of him, but I'm not from my husband, well, I guess. That's really awesome. I mean, if you talk to your husband and you're just stringing him along, because I hate cheaters. Yeah. He I really do. Him. I hate cheaters. I just think that there's no reason for it. All you got to do is talk to your husband or get out of the marriage. That's just uncool what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I just don't buy it. You know, I just don't buy that in a relationship you can't turn to this person and go, I'm not getting this out of you. Right, but to go right. across the street and do it to somebody else is just gutless, and I don't like it, and I really think that, you know, you're doing your husband a disservice, and you're doing yourself a disservice because you're probably a better person than that. And then you're dragging somebody else into your relationship. It's just a mess. And you're nailing an old guy. <laughs> and you're nailing an old guy. Yeah, I'll tell you what he gives you. Yeah, he gives you gray hair and panic. Whoa, man. Yeah. All right, Melissa. <laughs> That, that's a uh, quick and to the point right there. You, you take uh, Greg's advice, I suggest. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks okay. for the call. Are you okay. with me on that? No, you know what I think? I it, think what's, she, the, what's a good reason for cheating? There isn't one. She wanted almost, it sounded like you to validate, the, go into the story and you to validate, well, yeah, cheat. It's, a, it's, it's almost like why they call sometimes. But she also wanted me to tell her that she was bad because she knows what she's doing is stupid, and that's why she did it, and she's going to – she's gonna she, hopefully she'll stop. Okay, now we have another voice disguiser, 7,000 Jack, so leave it on. Let's go to Tracy. Tracy, you're on the Jamie Jack and Stint Show, Therapy Thursday with Greg Barrett. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to let you know your book, your last book, he's just not that into you. Help me get out of my last relationship. So easy. It was so easy. Thank you very much. But now I'm in another situation. Okay. I started dating a guy. He was great. Um, everything was perfect. I moved in with him. And as soon as I moved in with him, he started to be a little bit more jealous, a little bit more controlling, and it's increased. And I found out that his ex-girlfriend cheated on him, so he's not very trusting. All right. But he was completely trusting when we were just dating. 
Right. Is this going to get worse or is this going to get better? If he doesn't get help, it's going to get worse because it's not your fault. There's nothing you can do about this because his insecurity is not your thing. It's his thing. So he needs to get some help. And what you need to do is just let him go, look, dude, I, I can only be me. I'm in this relationship. I'm living with you. If you can't fix this, I will be moving out. But what I need for you to do is some, seek some help because you're insecure for some reason and you need to stop. So you need to go to therapy. You need to go to the gym. You need to do whatever it does to make you feel better about yourself. But uh, uh, this just isn't fun, and this isn't what I signed up for, okay? Because I'm here. I'm not your old girlfriend, and those stories, yawn. Yawn. Here comes the old story. Oh, yawn. But isn't that the worst paying for someone else's sins in a relationship? You know, yeah. like their past relationship. It, oh. it, it's not your fault that his old girlfriend cheated on him. You're not her. So tell him to get some help in whatever way he can. And if he doesn't do that, then you'll have to renegotiate the terms of that relationship. And $10,000 in party cash is going to be yours. <laughs> All, All right, right Tracy. Oh, Tracy. One more question. Oh, one more question. But, isn't, but his excuse is that my baggage is equal to his baggage. Oh. I don't know what that means. And it isn't. I don't know what that means. Let's compare bags. No, just tell yeah, him to get it, 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 He's keeping inventory, and I don't think that's don't right. Don't do that. No, just tell, just tell him to fix his own stuff. We're, worry about his side, okay? All right, thanks for the call, Tracy. Right now, we're going to go to Tony. He also wants to voice disguise your jack, so do not turn it off yet. Tony on with the voice disguise your 7,000. You are on Therapy Thursday with Greg Barrett. Go ahead with your question. Hey, okay, look, this is what happened. I've been dating this girl for a while, and um, one day we were hanging out at my apartment, and she asked if I... If I was interested in only sex, that I take it then and not drag this on and make her fall in love with me. Now, I turned her down, and we're still dating. We've still never performed intercourse. And I just want to know, uh, what, what was your opinion on that? Hmm. She gave you an out. So you were sitting there, and she said, hey, if you only want sex, let's just have sex now, and it's it's no strings attached. And yeah, it never talked to me again, though. Oh, so it was like, let's just have sex, and then I walk out of here, but she wanted a relationship. Yeah. No, that, actually, she asked me if I, was, if I wanted sex, then to just take it now and not drag this on. Weird. Okay, well, but, but you didn't do that because you like her, and so you wanted, so now you're waiting. So then now you're going to have sex soon, right? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not the sex necessarily I'm interested in because she's interesting in other ways, but. Um, dude, you're a dude. Sex. I mean, are you, sexually, just sex. are you sexually attracted to her? Yes, of course I am. Well, then you guys should have sex. I'm a little bit confused by the th question. I mean, I understand she said, "If you, this is just sex, let's do it now." And then go. But, but you, but right, but you didn't chose choose right. that. So you, what's you, the yeah, problem? My, yeah. My question is like, what, what, how, sh what, what is like. Like, is there maybe another meaning in that, or what does that mean? No, it means that she was she was basically saying to you, if this is just a sexual relationship, fine, let's have sex and then go. She was giving you an out, and you didn't take it. So yeah, that, you, that you, was a little uh, uh, chick test. Yeah, and you passed with flying colors. You were the man, and you decided that you liked her for more than just sex, and so now you guys are in a so now tell her you want to be in a relationship with her, and tell her you don't want to leave. And then you, you went know? knock boots, you know, and then have some sex. <laughs> All right. All right, bro. Hey, All right, you Tony. Guys are, hey, you guys are doing a good show. Thanks. Oh, thank, thank you, man. Thanks, Thanks for dude. calling. Everybody else, uh, we're going to take a break. There are tons of people on the phone. We've got relationship issues. We do have the Voice Disguiser 7000 available for you if you choose to disguise your voice. Greg Barrett is our guest. We're talking relationships. It's Therapy Thursday on the Jamie Jack and Stinch Show. Hey, shrinks are expensive. Stinch. Welcome to the show, everybody. Greg Barrett, our in-studio guest therapist today. Woo! <laughs> yes, that's me. How do you like that title? Non-therapist therapist, buddy. Non-expert expert. And the phones are lit up. 1-800-STAR-987 is the number. And if you've got relationship advice, Greg is, will give it to you just straightforward like a regular guy. And that really is your claim to fame. I'm just a dude. Just a regular guy. Just a dude. Wrote... Who loves people and knows you should have a good life. That's yeah. all. And you wrote a, a couple of really, really, really good books. That's right. I wrote the Da Vinci Code, uh, <laughs> a million little pieces. Uh, no, I wrote. Them. Oh, that <laughs> poor guy! Holy cow, crucified! Holy, it's a good thing. I felt for I felt for Mr. James Fry when he was on Oprah and she was ripping him apart. I felt bad, I mean, because he lied, and I, I have night recurring nightmares that I go on there, and she's like, "But it turns out he was just that into her, Greg." And then I'm a liar, and it's <laughs> I, I blew it. I tried one of your techniques on Stedman, it didn't work. Ah, and then you you're know. gonna just get ripped. No. Let's get right back to the phones. Uh, this is an actual amazing call I can't wait to get to. Nora, you're on with Greg Barrett. Go ahead and tell him your story. Hi, Greg. Um, Hi, Nora. I've 
<laughs> I've been friends with um, this guy for over 10 years. Oh. And about three years ago, um, we started getting intimate. We started having sex. And um, we talk on the phone like three or four times a day. And, you know, we go on vacations together. And, I mean, just hang out all the time. But we've never, like, established that we're a relationship or anything like that. And I just... Mm. Sometimes I wonder, am I wasting my time? Or well, yeah, I mean, have you have you ne- have you said anything about it, or are you just passively waiting for him to call it something? Well, um, about a month ago, he asked me. We we're out at dinner, and um, he asked me, you know, how I felt about him, and I told him, and um, he was like. Oh well, you know, I I had such a bad childhood. Sometimes I don't know if no, I don't have. Hey, you know what? You know what? You know what I did? I just oh, I just fell, I just fell asleep during his story because it's boring. You're awesome. You know what? If you want to be in a relationship, be in a relationship with somebody. And if you don't want to be in a relationship, then this sounds perfect for you. Okay. You're yeah. in a booty call, Nora. You're in a like, but it's an extensive booty call. It's weekends. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all the relationships, but calling a relationship. And I don't care about his boring old story. You know what? You're worth him changing, and not and and who cares? Big deal. You've been together for three years. You like each other. Just go, look, dude, you're either in or you're out. But I'm moving forward. You know what? I have a life. You, you know, I have things I want to do. If you want to you want to make this something solid, awesome. And if you don't, that's fine, too. But I don't want to be in a half thing, right? Do you want to be in a half thing? Hell no. Is this the way you dreamt about it <laughs> with you when you were a little girl? Hell no. <laughs> well, then let's change it, okay? Because you're okay. awesome, and it should be it should be something that you feel good about, okay? So, And give him the opportunity. He may step up. Just tell him, you know, blah, blah, blah about your past. Go to therapy for that. But you know what? Let's move <laughs> forward with the relationship if we're going to do this. Otherwise, I'm moving on because I'm hot, and there's other guys, okay? Thanks for the call, Nora. You're awesome, Nora. All right, let's get back to Maggie. Maggie, you're on with Greg Barrett. Thanks for calling. What's your question? Uh, actually, I had a comment. Uh, Greg, I just wanted to thank you so much. Um, we, I, some friends saw you when you were on Oprah and called me and said, you got to go get this book. And at first I was a little insulted. I was like, oh, my God, they see me and what this guy is talking about. Right. And I went to your book signing at the Grove, and I got the book, oh. and thought you were just such a nice, down-to-earth person. And I, I have you. to tell you, I read your book the night I got home from the Grove, and it got me through some of the most difficult times in my life, my breakup and subsequent divorce from my husband and my first relationship outside of being married. And it was another really bad experience. And I go back to that book and I think it's like um, the Bible for people who are dating in the dating world, because I bought seven copies, given them wow, all my thank girlfriends. You. <laughs> <laughs> my wife You're thanks welcome. you. My kids thank no, you. That's really Liz, cool though. Liz Duchillo, my no. co-author, thanks you. <laughs> I think it is such an important thing for people, and not just women, but men, too. Yeah. It's such common sense, and sometimes you just need to be knocked upside the head. And I have so many friends that, you know, put themselves on this in this situation where they think there's something wrong with them, and the book just makes you feel like it's not you. It's not about you. It's about them, and it puts the... Um, I don't know. It's just an amazing book. And I went Thank and I bought, I bought your second book. <laughs> Thank you. This is like you're an welcome. infomercial for me. No, but it's what you, you get so much out of the first book, then you're like, well, I had to go get the second book now. It's like the sequel. <laughs> you know what's funny? When it first came out, I was like, oh, that's not, that doesn't, doesn't pertain to me. But when I went through a breakup, I ran out to get the book. I'm like, now it does pertain to me. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm sorry you went through a breakup, but I'm, I'm sure you're going to move on and do something awesome. Well, that's the thing. It gives you hope that if you just hold out, and that's where I think people, it's so easy to give in and say, you know what, that's familiar. I know what that is. And I swear that book keeps me strong on my path to find the right person and make sure that I don't settle for something less than what I deserve. Awesome. And I, really, I thank you for it. I think you are. I'm so glad that you're getting your own show. I, after I read the book, I was like, God, he ought to get his own show. The you talk a lot, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> you don't stop talking. <laughs> Well, but you're the younger version of Dr. Phil, and I appreciate you. <laughs> you're awesome. Thank you so much, Maggie. Yeah. You're the Thank coolest. you for calling, Maggie. We appreciate the call, and, and congratulations on, on getting through all your crap. And here's a, a great call. I want to get one more before we run into the break. This is Vicki, and she wants to know how to tell her friend she's not that into you. Hello? Hi, Hi. Vicki. T- tell Greg your story. Oh, it's pretty simple. I have this friend, and she's really sprung on um, her girlfriend. She's... Um, so I kind of want to tell her, or I want to tell her, she's just not into her. How do I do that? It's like it's, rather than realizing yourself, like, hey, he's just not that into you. She's trying to tell a friend who who's dating a, another girl that she really likes, hey, that other girl's really not that into you. Yes, and get, it gets get. to the point where I see her number on my phone and I don't even want to answer it because she always has this drama, and I just want to know how I can tell her nicely. Get her the book. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's a good idea. Get to the book and just go, you know what? And, you also, as a, yeah, and also as a friend, go, you know what? I've heard enough of this. Like, you're my friend and I like you, but I, I got to tell you, it's just it's not working out. And, 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 uh, and I'm, and I'm, but I'm going to break up with you. <laughs> as your friend. I'm going to break up with you. I'm not kidding you if you don't stop. And sometimes that helps a friend. Like, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. You know? All right. Well, thanks for the call, Vicky. Get him the book. Tell him that that there she's just not that into you. Greg Barron is the author of that book. He's also here today playing guest therapist for, for, for the fifth guest therapist for us on Therapy Thursday. And uh, when we come back, more relationships with no sex in them whatsoever, and more friends awesome. with benefits on the Jamie Jackets Den Show. Hey, shrinks are expensive.